the seal colony. We're about to kick off the rest of this dive trip. The weather's pretty, uh, pretty cold right now. We've got a lot of massive southerly swell hitting the, the south side of Kaikoura. North side of Kaikoura. Oh, my. The, uh, I was really hoping he was going to hang around. Hello. You're having a sleep. Leave me alone. Don't bother me. So good. So good. Yeah. You are about to see in this video the South Island Spearfishing and Freediving Club's annual Labour Weekend Oaro trip. And this is the first day. And right here, we are beach launching and on the Kaikoura Peninsula. Why? Because this was where the clarity was today. So, Ring, are you doing uh, freediving today? Yes, we are. A little and bit a of bit depth of, training. Yeah, bit of spear fishing as well, hopefully. Yeah. Get us a feed for tonight. Right now, this is the best place, kind of the only place to dive. It's murky and dirty and not very good everywhere else. <laughs> and Rangi came here this morning while Israel, everyone was having breakfast and uh, checked it all out. Um, then you go back to the surface and you breathe up because usually you see your prey, you get all excited and that and then uh... Oh, these are fibre ones. Are they fibre ones? Yeah, they're not out on fibre. Alright. Um, they're not really fibre. Spear gun. Right there. Here we go. So we've got a bunch of different Spearos uh, on this trip. And right off the bat here, I'm going to draw something to your attention. The old snorkel coming off of the mask here. Yeah, that's not very good. And that's going to come back to haunt me later on in the video. It's a lesson learned in gear and equipment and looking after stuff is actually making sure that that snorkel is properly attached to your mask. You don't want to lose it, because if you lose it, your day is going to turn to crap real quick. Now if you saw the last episode, you would have seen me mentioning the weather. There was a large southerly front that was ready to come in and destroy the visibility around the Kaikoura Peninsula. And that's actually exactly what happened. You see, Rangi went out and he did the reconnaissance looking for the visibility in the morning. And what you're seeing here, which is maybe four meters, maybe three meters ish, was the best visibility that we could find and so this was at the seal colony just to the north of the peninsula which is probably one of the most shore dived places in all of Kaikoura and it will tell you what pretty barren not very fishy spent a hell of a lot of time initially just searching and just snorkeling and just looking and I perched myself up on a rock and I was waiting for the other guys to come over and just decided to have a keep on looking keep on searching and there's of course you can see the powers there the powers are there just to tease you because they're absolutely no take uh, you know in Kaikoura and on the peninsula you can't take any of the powers uh, and I finally finally started seeing some of the rash showing up they typically see them in the shallow water so I started having a shoot at some of those and I finally 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 hit a banded ras and it didn't get caught on camera Ah, oh, and this was another real learning experience for me. Okay, so I, I have to explain how I make a YouTube video here. Because what you're seeing right here is you're seeing the ras coming up on the spear. It's not a huge ras, it's just a little one. And I have to explain why I didn't get the shot of shooting the fish. So I'm stabbing it in the head there and the knife is struggling to get through the 
the poor little fish's skull because I didn't want it to suffer. I just ended up making a bit of a mess of it, but hopefully I killed it as quickly as possible. When I go diving, I don't always have the GoPro, you know, just recording like non-stop because you end up with like an hour or two hours of video and then you then have to sift through it all to try to find like the highlight parts. Uh, it's not really an efficient way to make videos but what I've discovered um, with spearfishing is that because you don't really know when the fish are going to show up I've learned that when you're creating a spearfishing video and you've got a GoPro on your goggles and that GoPro is recording you basically have to keep the thing recording the whole time you've just got to let it record So I'm trying to put the uh, fish threader through the uh, fish's mouth here and the fish threader is like literally bigger than the fish's mouth because the fish is so damn tiny. But I finally get it through and I'm actually quite excited at this point. It's like, yes! Shot a fish. And so that was one of two rats that I shot in these conditions. Now some of the other guys, they were diving down a wee bit deeper and they were finding a few of the bell butterfish uh, but I tell you what finding anything was quite difficult because it was just how damn murky it was uh, if you went up in the shallows like what I was doing here in just the three meters of water where it's reasonably shallow you could sort of see where things were but some of the other guys were going a bit deeper it was easier for them to find the butterfish uh, because the butterfish were in the slightly deeper water rather than the more shallower water. Okay, now do you remember me saying at the beginning of the video talking about the lost snorkel? Well, here's what happened there. I get up on this rock and I'm just perching and I'm just having a bit of a rest. And it's like, oh, okay, gonna have a wee bit of a rest now. Now what happened was when I got into the water before, the snorkel came loose. And I just went and lazily just tucked it up uh, against my strap. And then when I momentarily take my mask off, the snorkel just disappeared. Um, and I actually had to get one of the other divers to give me a hand to actually find the damn snorkel again. Otherwise, my day was going to be over. Uh, subsequently to this, I then went to the Kaikoura hunting and fishing shop and bought a new snorkel. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with the existing snorkel, but the existing snorkel was black. And finding a black snorkel amongst the seaweed is awkward. There he is there. That's the guy who gave me a hand. Uh, so I had to remedy that issue by buying a new snorkel um, and so now subsequently after this dive I now have a blue boche snorkel <laughs> so if it ever comes off again uh, hopefully it'll be easier to find so just after I've had a wee quick word to this fella I dive down and I grab a cray and it's just like the Kiwi Kaimawana intro here Except this cray wasn't underneath a rock. Believe it or not, this insane little crayfish was actually on top of a rock. So I just swooped down and grabbed it. Then take it back over to the uh, float there and get the measure out. And Oh, bummer. It's a little too small. It's a little too small. Bugger. So off you go. Bye-bye. It was nice meeting you. So you remember Ian Barker, right? He's the guy from episode one of season three, Barks Ruku Pool Training. So there he is, right there in the water with us, and he just kind of popped up out of nowhere. You can tell it's him because he's got this 
orange painted on the top of his uh, hood with the orange snorkel as well. You know, designed for high vis purposes. How deep is it here? Ah. Try and keep your legs a bit straighter. You're bending at the knee a bit. So he's saying, yep, we've probably chased off all of the butterfish. So yeah, I'm inclined to agree and, and it's about time to wrap it up. And just as I'm getting out, I run into Hamish and he's got his float there and it's loaded up with butterfish. Oh goodness. Hello, butterfish. <laughs>
still learning too. I miss a lot of them as well. I wasn't able to hit one of the butters, but got a couple of little rats. What didn't I do with the butters is uh, get the shit out of them reasonably quickly. I take the heat better because um, like a cow or a deer, they eat, they eat kelp. And, uh, all right well i've got a set of scales here so who shot this lot ringy uh theo Dion and me. Right, so this is the biggest one out of those. Theo got that one. Check me out with me apron. This one we have, it looks like 1.55 kilograms. That's a, that's a mammoth. How big is that one? Crikey! It's like about 51 centimetres? Yep. Jeez. And uh, have you got these memorized, have you? <laughs> what yeah, about this one? I think that was Dion. Dion. Yep. That one is 1.29. Wow. Well done, Dion. 48. Wow. First day of spearing some big butters. I didn't get any of the big butters, but the other guys did really well. I'm gonna cut myself, huh? Burn the seals. <laughs> how do we know how the crayfish identifies? What if it's female that identifies as male? Could you take it? <laughs> That's identity politics there. Yeah. Yeah. What we need to do is email MPR. Spear matter here for the butterfish. So I have some flour, some baking powder, a beer, and a ball. Fish. Yeah. Trust me, Connie, this this uh, fish is gonna be good. This is beer better butterfish. Is this when um from when you went fishing over the weekend? Yep, yep. From the spear fishing weekend. So this is the fish that you speared? Uh, I didn't spear these particular fish, but the other guys did. We also got a potato fritter. I got a powell patty and I got a another patty. Mm. I don't know what happened. I think I just blanked out when I went in. Is this your first time ordering your own fish and chips? Yes. Yes, it is. This is what Connie ordered. I over-ordered. It's a lot, isn't it? I was not, I was expecting everything to be half the size of what it is. Because <laughs> like, if you go, for example, like in US restaurants, if you order like fish and chips at the restaurant, you would get like, <laughs> maybe just this. Yeah. And then like, maybe this much of the chip. So I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. I, th I wasn't thinking. Anyway, uh, once that's cooled down, try the butterfish. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Tim? Pretty bitter, huh? It's actually no. not bad. It's you good. get the aftertaste is probably mm. I, like, like, I love, I just crave that. Aftertaste. A lot of energy into that shell. Yeah. But you see the dead ones on the ground. 
Yeah. With all the spikes, eh? And... Oh, 